The private investigator leaned over the small screen, watching impassively as the lovers lay naked on the hotel bed, recording the scene for a client. He sighed as he watched the impending end of the marriage. All these years later, I can't understand why a woman who has everything wants to ruin her own life like this. She's just a stupid broad, for God's sake. He leaned back in his chair and typed a message on his phone. Just one word. Slut. Hit send. And it was done. He stared at the screen, waiting for the next action he knew was coming. He was instructed to keep recording until he was signaled to stop. He knew the woman's husband was about to enter the room. It wasn't the best decision, but he was assured that there would be no violence unless the rascal pounced. In that case, the husband would defend himself. It was a risk, and he knew it, but he was keeping a record, and there was a copy for him, too, if he needed it for any reason. Quickly, less than a minute later, there was a knock on the door of the room with the lovers prostrate naked on the bed. Room service. The man sighed but got up from the bed and wrapped himself in a robe and threw a blanket over his reclining lover. The detective watched him approach the door. Showtime, he thought to himself. The man opened the door. The detective heard a muffled conversation. He knew what it was about. The client had outlined to him the expected development, but he was concerned about his husband's reaction when he came face to face with the man who had made him a cuckold. The detective hoped his colleague would be a restraining influence, but he was still nervous. The woman suddenly sat up on the bed, wrapped in the blanket. You could tell by her body language that something was wrong. She was sneaking around the bed away from the door. Her lover came into view, slowly heeled toward the bed, and when his feet touched the edge of the bed, he leaned back and stretched out next to his mistress, who by now began to cringe in desperation and repeat over and over again, No, 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 this can't be, no, please, no. It was then that he saw the gun in his husband's hands. Shit! He was too far away to stop what was happening now. He was helpless. Don't do it, damn it, man! Just don't do it, damn it! He thought of his co-worker. Where the hell was he? The action in the hotel room had frozen. The conversation was muffled, but the woman was now openly crying. Her lover sat with his hands raised in surrender as the client stood before them. He listened in. Okay, bitch, first of all, we're done, done, finito, caput, do you understand me? No, no, it's not what it looks like. Shut up if you don't want another hole in your head. She cringed, recoiling from him. She'd never seen him like this before. Then again, how many times before had her husband caught her in bed with another guy? His eyes drilled her as she sat wrapped in the hotel blanket. Her lover dared her for a split second and made a frantic movement toward her husband. The husband who was praying for any excuse, lightning fast, put the barrel of the gun to his head. A satisfying crack brought a grim smile to the husband's face. The woman saw it and shuddered. Her scream tensed her husband. He pointed the gun at her head, his eyes wild. Listen, I've already got everything I need to divorce your ass and ruin that bastard. The only thing I haven't taken care of yet is a damn good whipping for you two. Just don't give me any more reason. Sit still and be quiet. He paused as if trying to calm himself down. I'm not prone to violence. He smiled, waving the gun in front of his lovers. Anyway, I've decided that you both will pay and pay dearly for your adultery. There's no way you cheap wench is going back to the house. You have no business being there. And I don't want any more cheaters. All your belongings, whatever they may be, are already packed and on their way to your sister. You have no money, no credit cards, nothing. Understand? The woman just looked at him, stunned. Understand? He swung the gun again. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand, but what about... She started. I don't need your questions. I'll decide for myself what you need to know. Is that understood? She nodded slowly. Though at that moment everything was jumbled up in her head, she was in shock. The kids are fine, by the way, thanks for asking. They already know what a cheating broad their mother is, so don't expect any sympathy from them. I'd give them a few years to calm down if I were you. They were pretty upset when they found out you and that asshole had sex in our bedroom a few weeks ago. Yes, dear Rebecca, they saw and heard you. What I cannot and will not forgive is your utter disrespect for our marriage and our children. She awed. A sob escaped her throat. She brought her hand up to her mouth. She had no idea what the children knew. 
The realization made her think feverishly, remembering how her lover had snuck into her house and they had ended up in bed for almost an entire day. She hadn't seen her children that day, hadn't seen them stay out late, and then come home looking sullen and withdrawn. She also didn't notice how brooding and upset her husband was, because she was too busy scheming and thinking about herself and her lover. He stared at her, allowing the words to penetrate her mind. Oh, did I mention that the rogue's wife also knows all about you two? Well, that will be a nice surprise you can give your lover when he comes to his senses. We use the same legal team for our divorces, still saving money. She awed again when a groan from the floor meant her lover was coming to his senses. There you go. Why don't you help him? After all, you're in shit together. Maybe you can work something out. He laughed. The man watching the screen breathed a sigh of relief. Even from here, it was obvious that the anger was under control. That is, unless the bastard opened his mouth and said something stupid. On the screen, the husband looked at the camera and smiled. That was the signal. Back to the script. Thanks a hell of a lot for that, thought the detective. The text message was sent again. He leaned back in his chair and sighed in relief as he looked at the screen. There was a knock on the door of the room, and a man walked in. He was wearing a long coat and fedora. In his hand, he held two large envelopes. He approached the woman first. Are you Rebecca Polson? She nodded sadly before muttering, Yes, I am. Thank you, ma'am, you have been served. He turned to her lover, who had managed to sit on the edge of the bed and was now rubbing his head. Jonathan? I beg your pardon, sir, are you Jonathan Green? He nodded. Yes, damn right I am. You've been handed a message, Mr. Rascal. The messenger turned and disappeared in seconds. Steve Polson looked Jonathan Green in the eyes, and Jonathan Green felt hatred. He flinched, trying to look away from those gray eyes. They reminded him of a wolf. By the time you realize this, I'll have your life in a big way. You'll get what you deserve from your wife, but I'll get what I deserve soon enough, buddy. Your wife doesn't want you home. She's taken her kids to her parents. And as you know, her daddy has the resources to really screw up your life. So, buddy, there's no need for me to do time for you, pair of crooked scoundrels. I'll leave you now. I wish you a good life. And I'm sure you'll have plenty to talk about, so I'll leave you lovebirds alone. With these words, he turned and left the room. The lovers sat on the bed, staring at the envelopes wondering what the hell had just happened. The man watching the screen let out a huge sigh of relief, but continued to watch. Jonathan Green pulled out his cell phone and called his wife. That didn't go over too well. Rebecca Polson, sitting in a near catatonic state, could hear the woman's sarcastic voice. Jonathan threw his phone across the room as he began to realize that the consequences had already begun. He yelled at Rebecca Polson, who began yelling back at him, the screen showed them taking out their anger on each other for the collapse of their lives. That bitch hung up on me. You've been warned, asshole. The detective stood up and refreshed his scotch on the rocks while the scene continued to play out on the screen. Jesus, what a fucking day. Another happy couple going on the road. He drained his glass in a volley. Watching scenes like this one had been a major part of his business for the past few years, and his reputation for preying on cheating spouses was well known. He was the best, but he himself couldn't get used to celebrating the dissolution of someone else's marriage. Scenes from his own experience when he had discovered his wife with his brother began to replay in his mind. He poured himself another, remembering that it had ended badly, too. He hadn't spoken to his brother since that day. His wife tried to pass it off as a one-time thing. It was just sex and blah, blah, blah. He had heard it all so many times in the years since then. He couldn't move past it, forgive her or forget her. He just walked away, divorced her. Had he done the right thing? Hell yes. But damn it, it hurt like hell and it still hurt. Even after 15 years, it still hurt. He knew how Steve Polson would feel when he woke up alone in the morning. While the chase was on, it distracted the stalker from the real pain of loneliness. You stupid fool, if you cared even a little bit, you would ask yourself why. Why? Why? Now your pain is just beginning. He reached over, turned off the connection, and started to shut everything down. His cell phone rang. He opened it and asked, Steve, are you okay? You had me worried for a bit. Yes, I have everything written down and we'll have it ready for you tomorrow. See you then. Bye.